Hello community, great that you are back. Grog for the new model, the second part of the video. In the first part, we saw that Grog 4 achieved a 19 step solution in a causal reasoning logic test. Now, it is the goal is to achieve the shortest sequence possible. So, if we look at Sonnet 4, 11 steps, O3, 9 steps, and Gemini 2.5 Pro, 8 steps, maybe we can improve Grog 4 performance if we give it a little bit of help, if we give it a little bit of an indication what to optimize, how to optimize, and if we run it multiple times. Let's see if we can improve the performance of Grog 4. It is now several hours later compared to my first video here on Grog 4. I work quite a lot here with this model on the platform. I optimized it and as you can see I have now the latest result here. We are now down to a result of nine button presses here. So this is the shortest sequence that it found as a possible solution to my causal reasoning test. We have here step by step state table and as you can see beautifully we see exactly which button was pressed, what is the energy level, the tokens, the flags that were raised, the card with the codes that were necessary to go there and we see that, okay, correction and replan for this step, okay, another correction. So this is now run number nine here on Grog 4. Okay, another correction. Now we have 10 steps. Oh yeah, this looks good. Look, there we have it now from floor 29. There's a shortcut over the emergency exit to floor 50 and it found this shortcut, which is excellent here. So we are back here to, yeah, 10 presses. This is great. So the total presses in total is a sequence of 10 button presses. It is really lower than the 20 that I allow as the minimum requirement. The energy packages is just enough. Minimum would be five. It achieved six energy levels to tokens. Minimum two. It achieved three. Great. For the code, it exactly has here the minimum number that it is able to pass this test. But here you can see this is still not optimal because the optimal solution would have that it ran into zero trap doors or trap button presses. But unfortunately, it still ran into one trap. So it is still not on the optimal side. But I think now after about one and a half hour, this is it. This is the best I can achieve with Grog 4 on the very first day that it was released. It tells me this run is now Pareto optimal in the multi-objective sense about the minimum button presses, the maximized code card to maximize the energy, maximize the tokens while meeting the constraints. Now, you know, here I, okay, maximize the energy, this is okay. Maximize the code card is not a condition that I applied on this test. This is an interpretation by Grok4 for, for this test that is not in my instruction. Maximize the tokens is also not what I put into it. This is here that Grok4 came up and decided this is an optimization criterion that it wants to implement here. But again, this is imposed by Grok4 it's on itself by itself. It gives me the key arguments. Okay, so if we have this, if you want surface constraint, then of course 10 is the best solution it can find. Tells me here no dominant longer runs. Because I ask, hey, if you run longer, would you find a better solution? But I have no no access here to increase here if you want the period of time that Grok4 thinks about this. Tells me no longer run improves all the metrics without worsening the presses. And it tells me it disbalances here the minimum presses with the required resources in the code, meeting all goals optimally under the given constraints, which is excellent. So you see... Working with Grok4 really helps, it proves Grok4 has now a result that is really competitive under the top three LLM here on this world with a total press sequence of 10 and respecting here all the other requirements. Very beautiful. But you see, you need time. You need to have work with your model because it will not have the perfect solution in the first run. So be prepared here really to go into a Give it a hint, do this, then if you see the reasoning step, this is so helpful to help then Grok4 itself in its reasoning process. 
But yes, it really helps if you invest a little bit of time to optimize the result of Grog 4. So I tell Grog 4 here, you are not requested to maximize the code cards or the number of the tokens. Correct this for your best solution. So now we're waiting. Grog 4 goes back and tries now to find a corrected solution. And yes, you see, even those advanced models, sometimes they interpret or they impose here boundary condition on certain things that they came up with because it was in their pre-training data or in their fine-tuning data. But it was not in my instruction given for that particular task. So therefore, sometimes the model constrain themselves with something that is not in the task. So always careful check the boundary condition where the model starts to reason. And this is why it's so helpful if you see the reasoning process itself, because then you see immediately, hey, wait a minute, it has suddenly as an internal condition that it has to optimize the number of the code cards. This is not, I just give it here a minimum amount of code cards that it has to collect to pass this test. But I don't see anything that it has to maximize the number of code cards. This is an internally imposed restriction on the solution. So let's see what Grok4 comes up with next. So here we go again. And after some minutes, it takes time. Yeah, thank you for the clarification. I misinterpreted, tells me Grok4, the objective as requiring the maximization, the actual goal or to reach floor 50 in less than 20 button presses on the elevator while finishing with at least five energy packages more than two token, at least two codes, and less than one trap triggers. Beautiful. There is no requirement to maximize code. You see, now we have the correct solution. Now we can start, and the exact sequence is still <laughs> 10 presses. Okay. <laughs> it is it's not really that it's had, okay, I could optimize here anything. So let's see, does it change anything at all? No, it's still the same amount of presses we have here floor 29 to floor 50, the emergency exit. This is great. So we have a total again of 10 button presses. Financial resources is again six. We need five. Tokens is three, minimum two. Code count is the minimum number. And still we have one problem here with the traps. Okay. And it says it is, oh, wait a second, this, <laughs> it tells me, hey, this 10 press run is optimal as the minimal presses possible during all the constraints. So even if we modify here now the code card requirement and the token requirement, it still stays here at exactly more or less the same. So this meets all goal legally under the trend presses and is proven optimal. All decision are justified as necessary for the constraint and for the optimality. Interestingly, so beautiful, 29, 50, emergency exit. And as I showed you here, same here, 2950 emergency exit. It found here a complex solution. This is great. But otherwise, yeah, I could say validate another time. But you see, I think with 10 button presses, this is really the maximum Grok4 can achieve. Let's do it. And as then, can you optimize this solution further? You know, the shortest number of button presses wins. And let's hope we don't have to wait another five or 10 minutes that it's coming up right now and it says hey yes of course i can optimize further or hey buddy this is such a complex problem i'm glad i found a 10-step solution at all hmm should we wait okay i think it started to think all over again so we we'll see you in my time in 10 minutes and you in the very next second And here we are again, and we have here an answer, and Grok4 tells me the optimized solution. After exhaustive analysis detailed in D below, I confirmed that 8 is the minimal number of button presses possible to reach floor 50 while satisfying all constraints. Energy greater than 5, tokens equal greater than 2, 2 codes, 1 random trap, no forbidden moves. Yep, absolutely. This improves on my previous 10 press solution by finding a shorter path to floor 15. Okay. The exact sequence is this. D, B, 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 A, B, C, B. <laughs> okay, I have no idea. Okay. And then invoke emergency access. This is not a button press. 
<laughs> okay, it's kind of cheating. Okay, it's nine, but never mind. I don't care about this. Okay, so it tells me. Okay, so we start here with the first button press is D. Okay, I have to look up this in detail. I can't tell you right now. And then from eight, yeah. And then we press step nine, <laughs> the emergency exit button, and we go to floor 50. Okay, beautiful. It improved. You see, again, total price is eight. You have to run it again, run it again, run it again. Give it a hint. Maybe tell it if you see the reasoning, where the reasoning traces are going crazy, you can correct it over there. So you have to work with your model. I think I spent now then close to three hours here with Grog 4. But now I have it, I think, to the, to the best solution. And this would be eight button presses on the elevator. This is the shortest sequence of button presses to reach here. The goal. This is great. And you see the number of trap hits is now zero. Beautifully. And now Grog 4 tells me, okay, this eight press run achieves the minimal presses possible while meeting all constraints. Justification, okay. Oh, sorry. Gives me all the justification. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We'll read this a little bit later, just to show you here. So Grog4 tells me this run is optimal, the shortest process while meeting the goals. Longer runs, 9 plus, could add resources, but worse than the primary metric of this is a shortest sequence optimization. Real nice. So you see, after some time, yeah, Grog4 achieved it also, like here, all the other models to come down here to an 8 press solution. Beautiful. And this is on the very first day that Grog4 is available here for the public. So really nice. It found it. It found a solution. It takes a little bit of time that you have to work with the model. But otherwise, hey, welcome Grog4 to the AI community. If you want to see more videos like this, you know, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.